I would love to get started with today's Lab at Home. What about you, Max? I'm ready. Awesome. Well, friends, welcome to Little Lab. Um, today is the last day in our Safer with Science uh, series on proven scientific ways to um, to slow the spread of COVID-19. We talked about masks. We talked about hand washing last time. That was a, that was a really fun one. Um, and today we're going to talk about this last piece um, on social distancing. Oh, Isabel, I love that you've watched all, almost all of these. That's awesome. Um, so tell me, tell me what that means, friends. What do we think it means to social distance? This is a term that I had never heard before this year, and now I, I swear I hear it every day. What does that mean to social distance? This is good. It means, it means staying away from others. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Social, meaning being with other people, and at a distance, meaning we're staying far away. And there's sort of this rule of thumb, this idea um, where we, we have a number in mind for how far away we should stay from people. Does anyone know what it might be? What about you, Max? The rule that I always hear about social distancing when you can't be away from other people is six feet. I've heard six feet as well, six feet or two meters. It's actually, I think, you know, 1.8 or 1.9 meters. Um, but six feet, so maybe as tall as a taller person, maybe, but it's kind of hard to think about how far six feet is. It's not really uh, intuitive. It's not something we can just figure out. An inch is something that I can think about because it's smaller. I know an inch is maybe about that big, right? Um, but, but it's harder to figure out six feet. Um, we were going to talk about some different ways today that we could figure out six feet and also talk about how six feet isn't a magic number that automatically um, helps protect us in all situations. Talk about that in a second, right? Um, but are any of you doing um, kind of our activity at home with us? What do you think? Because I've got some string. I've got a ruler. I don't know if any of you at home um, have your adult helping you with some scissors. And then I've also got two pencils, although two popsicle sticks would also work, right? We're just looking for two things that two people could conceivably hold. Um, when we're talking about measuring six feet and we have a ruler, we're talking about six of these, right? Your ruler is usually about a foot long. So we want to measure six of these, and what we could do is put it down on the ground and roll out our string. But if you're like me and we're trying to um, get it all in a little screen like this, we can um, use this kind of this trick, where we're going to start by holding it at the bottom, and we're just going to wrap it around our ruler six times. Right? Ready? Here's the length. One, two. Whoops, and I'm gonna make sure not to drop it. That's an important part. This is a good one for motor skills. What do you think, Max? It is a good one for motor skills, Peregrine. And one important thing about this activity as you're wrapping at six feet is that we don't think that what you're gonna do is take your string around with you and measure the distance between you and other people. That's not probably how it's gonna work. But what this will do is it, it'll help build a really, really important scientific skill called uh, intuitive measurement. Like Peregrine said, uh, it, it's kind of hard for us to figure out exactly what distances are, and it's hard for us to figure out, uh, aside from counting things, what a lot of different numbers kind of mean in the real world. And intuitive measurement, if you've ever been to the museum and you've been to the exhibit Math Moves, is the exhibit on the first floor next to weather that has the different sized chairs and it's got that machine where you can make the different sounds. That's all about intuitive measurement. It's about figuring out ways that we can tell what different numbers and distances and measurements are without needing to use an instrument like a ruler, which is a good tool to use in a lot of circumstances, but not very helpful to us when you're in the grocery store and you need to figure out how far away you need to stand from other people. Creating one of these long six-foot strings, again, 
it's probably not going to be the most useful tool when you're somewhere out in public and trying to figure out how far away you should be from somebody. But it will help you start to build that skill and help you better understand about how far that is. And the more that you're able to play around with measuring things just using your brain and your eyes, the better you're going to get at figuring out around what that distance feels or looks like. So we're kind of training our brains to figure out how far, or about how far six feet is. That's great. I've, I've gone up and down this ruler six times, which means I've actually wrapped it around only three times, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra because I know I'm going to have to tie it. And I'm going to cut it with my dull scissors. There we go. <laughs> And all that I'm going to do is I'm going to attach one end to this pencil and one end to the other. And that's going to give us six feet um, to start thinking about other things we can use to measure it, right? Because you can bring around a ruler to get your brain trained on thinking how far a foot is. Um, there's always the option of a measuring tape, right? But there's also parts of your body that you could use to help you measure. Um, this is something where you can measure um, the length of your arm. You could measure, right, the length of your, of your arm from here. We can use other references to help us figure out um, how long a foot is, or in this case, how long six feet is. So I'm going to start tying this here. Like Max was saying, this isn't so you can hold a string and walk around in public places, uh, because that's not necessarily going to work in a grocery store, probably. But it's to help train your brain and help you figure out um, what this distance is and how we can figure it out just in our brains. So we've created, or I will have created in just a moment, this kind of really long <laughs> string figure here. I would love to do an experiment, like figure out um, how many of my arms length will fit between this space. I could also do stuff like I could um, put it down on the ground and I could see how many of me from my head to my feet would fit inside of this space. That would be a great way to help me think about how far this distance really is. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about, before we talk about one more tool that we could use to help measure distance, I wanted to talk about why we use six feet, right? Like why, why six feet? And do any of you have any ideas? What do you think? I think it, right, when we say that it helps keep us safe from um, potentially getting sick with a virus or potentially a uh, virus traveling between people, what does the six feet have to do with it? And this kind of goes all the way back to what we were talking about when we talked about masks and what masks help protect us from. It has to do with those droplets we talked about. So whenever we're talking, especially whenever we are shouting or singing, um, we make droplets. And uh, remember, we were talking about sneezes, right? I have my spray bottle. Achoo! It makes this mist of, <laughs> of droplets. And these droplets are big, but the droplets that come from us, some of them are really small, and they float in the air. The six feet comes from this kind of older um, study when we first started figuring out high-speed photography and we were able to capture on film what a sneeze looked like. And I would love to share with you all um, what, that, what a sneeze looks like if you capture it on camera. So I'm gonna share my screen here. <laughs> this, is just a quick, this is just a quick look at um, this uh, 1940s study where they were able to capture what a sneeze looks like when it is exploding from someone's mouth like this. And they figured more or less, right, maybe a sneeze like this can travel at about, um, it, it can travel really fast and it goes maybe about six feet before um, all the droplets that they could see had already fallen down and would, were not able to affect another person. But we've learned since that there's more than just the droplets coming out of our mouth. There's lots of other factors in our environment, like airflow. If I'm in a room that's really stuffy, there's not a lot of breeze, 
the droplets will hang out for longer. And the more droplets there are in the air, the greater the chance that they could infect another person, right? Um, so six feet might not help in an environment that's very stuffy and closed, but it has a better chance of working somewhere where there's a nice breeze or even outside, because that means that they will kind of spread out and there's a less dangerous member near other people. So we're saying six feet is a good place to start. Um, but there's a different way um, that we can uh, think about keeping our risk smaller. And there's actually a really helpful chart that I'm gonna put a link to in just a moment about figuring out um, how to keep our risk as small as possible, starting with distance, but also including things like masks and making sure that we can get our hands washed after. So we talked about a couple different ways of um, looking at distance. We talked about doing an experiment to see um, if we can compare measurements of our own bodies to our string contraptions. But I wanted to show you all one more, and that is um, a way that we can measure distance using um, a smartphone. And this is something really cool that, that Max told me about. Um, you first learned about it when it comes to telling distance to something much further away, right? Sure. So there's, there's a, a similarity between you at the grocery store and scientists who are studying distances that are really, really, really big. And that similarity is in both cases, you can't really just use a ruler or a lot of the other tools that we would normally use to measure distance. And one thing that a while ago scientists wanted to better understand was the distance to the moon. How far are we from the moon? More than I want you to think about that for just a second. How could you figure out how far it is to the moon? Can you take a ruler and stretch it all the way there? Can you take one of those strings and even stretch that all the way there? We know that both the Earth and the moon are moving, and that makes it even more complicated than it being further away. So they knew they needed to come up with, again, some other way of measuring distance, some intuitive way of beginning to measure distance. And the way they decided to try to measure it was they put mirrors on the moon. So there are currently still up there a few mirrors on the moon. And what we do with those mirrors is we shoot very powerful lasers at those mirrors. Now think about that for a second. If you're in your room and you shoot off a laser in your room, we saw this earlier in one of our earlier little labs at home, it just almost immediately shows up on the wall. But it's not immediate. That light, that beam that's traveling out of your laser takes a tiny amount of time to get from the bulb to Peregrine's hand there or to the wall in your room. And if it goes even further of a distance, it takes even more time to get there. So if a laser has to go from Earth to, say, a faraway object like the moon, that beam is going to take a pretty long time to get there. And it takes an even further amount of time if it encounters something else there that makes it bounce back. Because think about what would happen if you shined a laser into a mirror at your house. What would happen to that beam? I think that it would bounce around. I think it that would bounce back off of that mirror. So by shooting a laser onto a mirror on the moon, that beam takes a little bit of time to get there, bounces off of that, off of that mirror, and then takes a little bit of time to get back. By measuring how long it takes for the laser beam to go all the way up to that mirror on the moon and then all the way back, we are able to figure out how far it is to the moon. And guess what? That distance changes just a little bit based off of time of year. So it's a really accurate and important way for us to figure out how far it is to the moon. That's really amazing. I, I was reading that it takes about two and a half seconds for a laser to get to the moon and then to get back to Earth from the moon. Um, so, so what does that have to do with using a smartphone? 
This same technology that Max was talking about using mirrors and lasers is something that our smartphones do to help the camera focus. So there's um, a certain app that we can use that uses that laser technology to help us um, tell distance. Now, this is something that I would have a little bit of trouble showing you with my screen um, and this small amount of space that I have. So I was talking to my friend David, who is the APM of Tinker Lab um, at the Museum of Life and Science. He's kind of our technical guy. He knows a lot about different kinds of technology. And we recorded a short video to show you all how you could use a smartphone to tell distance. So I want to share that video with you right now. This will be our last thing. Here we go. Go ahead and press play. There we go. Hi everyone, my name is David. I'm the Associate Program Manager for Tinker Lab here at the museum. And today, we are going to learn about how technology can help us social distance. So here I'm joined by my friends Peregrine and Jenna. Jenna has an iPhone and Peregrine has an Android device. Um, both will help us learn the distance between one another and help us learn about social distancing. Uh, we're going to demonstrate this technology first, and then we're going to take a closer look at how that technology actually works. So now let's take a closer look at the technology used to help us social distance. We're first going to talk about the iPhone. So as you see on the screen next to me, is the video of Jenna's iPhone. And as you see, there's an app called Measure. This app helps us measure the distance using augmented reality. And to start off with, you will see Jenna has to orient their iPhone to learn about the space around it. And then they will drop a point onto the ground, and then they will use that point to then measure the distance between them and Peregrine. And that kind of gives us an approximate distance uh, between Jenna and Peregrine, as you see by the video, it is 8 foot and 11 inches, which is approximate because the rug below them is about a 9.5 foot rug. So now we're going to look at an Android device. As you see next to me, we're going to look at the Measure app, which you can download from the Google Play Store uh, on an Android device. This app will help determine social distance very similar to the iPhone's app. So as you see at the start of the video, Peregrine has to orient their device to the space around them. And just as Jenna did, they dropped a point onto the ground and measured the distance between them and Jenna. And as you see by the video, uh, the Android device measured at about nine feet, which is approximate just like the iPhones as this was a nine and a half foot rug, but it was still able to help us social distance by using AR to determine the distance between Peregrine and Jenna. So that is one way you can use technology to help you stay a safe and healthy distance away from others to help slow the spread of COVID-19. That's all from the museum. Back to you, Peregrine. Awesome, so that was a little bit from the museum. Um, thanks so much to David for helping us out with that one. We hope that that might be um, of, of interest to some of you all. It sounds like the Measure app comes on an iPhone um, for, the, uh, for an Android device. You only need to um, download it as a free app from the Google Play Store. Um, it's just called Measure, and it looks like the app that we had there. Um, and I hope that that can be of some help with you all when you're uh, learning to train our brains to learn more about um, it, uh, intuitive measurement like we were talking about. We want to thank you all so, so much for joining us for our entire Safer with Science series, our three-part series. Um, we had a really special uh, question and answer session with uh, Dr. Christine Daniels, uh, who works at the Duke Human Vaccine Institute that we're going to be putting up later in the week. So keep a lookout for that one as well as this one on our YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for joining us today. I really look forward to seeing you next week. And we are going to be doing um, we are, we are going to be doing an experiment that has to do with um, acid and base reactions. Awesome. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much, friends. Bye, everybody.